Hello, my name is Marcia Wilson. I'm working on a painting. This is a canvas that was from the discard pile at an art school. Another student has not picked it up at the end of the semester, so I'm painting over it. It looks like it was a f two figures, possibly a mother and child, but whatever it is, I'm going to put my own painting over it. So I'm starting out with a green oil paint and a brush that seems a little small, but who cares? And I'm just pushing the paint around and thinking. I'm not thinking rationally, I'm just enjoying myself while listening to music. It's Saturday afternoon at the opera on the radio. I love painting to opera music. I got in the habit from this Saturday afternoon at the opera. Odd, huh? So, here I am, listening to Madame Butterfly, well, kind of doodling on the canvas. You know, like when you're on the telephone, you make a doodle, a mindless doodle. That's what it's like. I'm just sitting here thinking and painting. And what I'm thinking of are family problems. It's the holiday season, and one of my children is not speaking to me. So I'm feeling a little sad about that. But I get this idea because when you're an artist, you have all kinds of ideas, that I can comfort myself by making a painting of a mother and child, only in this case, it won't just be me and my grandson or something like that, or one of my granddaughters. It'll be me comforting my inner child, comforting my inner self. So this cheers me up. I get very happy at the thought of this. And after there's going to be a little gap here because my camera malfunctioned i think it was my sd card and so we're going to jump now to a later stage of the painting where i have red paint around it but it's definitely a mother and the inner child is green that's like a little doll it's little marcia so here i am back working on it enjoying myself i'm fishing around probably for pen or pencil or brush. Who knows? I'm not the most organized person in the world. I'm sitting while doing this painting. I was, I, I was standing for the big canvases, but when I work small, it's very comfortable to sit, just like I used to sit at art shows. Now I've started painting with a, an oil stick. It's called a pigment stick made by the R and F company out of Poughkeepsie, New York. I'm using a, a, an off-white color and I'm, I'm, I'm just outloading. I don't know what I'm doing. It, I, that, I've put a dog in the front of this painting. That's my, my friend Mookie, my black dog. And uh, I'm wearing rubber gloves. I got the idea from watching other artists work. Rubber gloves are kind of nice because some of these paints, like the cadmiums, are not supposed to be so good for you. So they protect my skin from, you know, possible toxins, but also they allow me to paint with my fingers if I want to, without getting everything all yucked up. Speaking of which, I cut my own hair. Can you tell that from these pictures? Oh well. Did you notice I started this recording using a paintbrush when I first started on the canvas? Now I'm using oil sticks. When you're an artist, you can really paint with anything. One of my teachers recommended everybody get very fine brushes, but I, I paint with anything. I usually get my brushes from the dollar store, and you, you know, you can paint with just anything at all. It's not necessary to have high-priced supplies unless you really need them. The uh, R&F pigment sticks or oil sticks are expensive, but I kind of need them. I can't find any imitations that are as good. So that's one of my extravagances, along with good paint. By the way, um, I'm, as you can see, I'm scrubbing away at this painting. It, it doesn't really have a happy ending in this video. 
it doesn't end up looking absolutely gorgeous by any means. The reason why I did this video is to show you what a good time I have painting. What a good time I had making this painting. And how I cheered myself up by painting a subject of myself nurturing little, little Marsha. <laughs> so uh, that's the whole point. It's like an adventure of having fun. I'm back to using a brush. Remember I was using a paint stick? Now I've got a brush. And it's not a particularly good brush. I, you know, as I said, people can paint with just about anything. So you see, this is not meant to be a how-to video. It's meant to be a, a video that gives you permission to be yourself and just push the paint around and have a good time. You notice I'm not copying anything. I'm just, I'm just thinking good thoughts and enjoying myself. It's the most relaxing thing in the world to paint at this stage of my life. When I first started out in, well, I, I guess I was an artist all my life, but not really practicing in art. I, I did my own Christmas cards and I made sketches here and there, but it wasn't until I signed up for my first art show in 1970, when I was 33 years old, that I became a real artist in the sense that I, instead I went from, I just became an artist. And so when I first started to be an artist back in 1970, I, st I didn't have any ideas. I had lots of energy, lots of desire, but I didn't really know what to paint. So I started copying, which is of course the best kept secret artists always have just like musicians, artists copy from each other. We can get inspired from each other. But when I started out, if I wanted to do a wolf, I had to look in National Geographic and find a picture of a wolf. If I, whatever I wanted to do, I usually copied. The only things I could do without copying were flowers that looked kind of like uh, Kleenex balls on sticks. And um, I, I, I could do a woman holding a cat, but not much else. It wasn't until 1973, that's three years later, I took a class in batik, which is like playing with your food. It's dribbling wax on fabric. And that freed me up. I, I was able to draw anything with batik. It's like drizzling gravy on your potatoes or something. It's very freeing. I was able to do clowns and dogs and cats and flowers. I had to work fast before the wax spilled all over. And so over the years I changed that. I did wood carving, I did etchings, and now I'm back to painting. And at this stage of my life, it's totally relaxing because I somehow or other I have the confidence that I I have the confidence to paint what I don't know how to paint, to draw what I don't know how to draw. I have the, the feeling that it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to do things wrong. It's okay to just relax, just make a doodle, a little... Anyway, so that's what I'm doing, and I, I find it totally relaxing. If I want to sit and imagine the most peaceful feeling in the whole world. I'm up here at, at Vitlasil in the painting studio, painting and listening to opera and relaxing without a care in the world and without trying to do a good job. I'm not trying to do a masterpiece here. I'm just trying to make a picture of myself comforting myself. I don't really know what direction I'm going in, but I'm just thinking about it and I'm enjoying it and I've got my dog there, my little friendly dog. It's a painting I'm doing just for me. What could be better? I tell you, it's heaven on earth. And by the way, Vitlasil is part of the Art Students League of New York City. It's the Spark Hill, New York residence for artists. Here's a still photograph of the painting. See my little inner child? She's green. 
Cute, huh? I apologize for boring you, but some people say they like to watch me paint at the regular pace, not speed it up. So here I am. I've, I've picked out a paintbrush here that's all stiff because it's not very clean. So I'm trying to soften it up. Thank goodness I'm wearing the rubber gloves. And I'm about to put it first into the turpentine. That's all I use is turpentine and paint, no other medium. And then I'm sticking it in something. I don't have any black paint out, so I'm going to use either a dark green or a dark blue, maybe both of them. And I'm going to start to make my black dog Mookie in this picture. So here I go. Let's go, Marsha. Come on. Yeah, we're going to start with the ear. And now the other ear. I like these little twisty lines. You know, everybody becomes themselves, and some people draw with straight lines, and some people draw with twisty lines, and I guess I'm a twisty line person. But the whole point of this exercise is just that I'm happy. I know it doesn't look like I'm happy, but I am. I'm having a very good time. The hours just fly by when I'm working on paint. For some reason or other, it keeps me very happy. You know, the first time I went to an art show, the one in, well, the one anyway that I joined in 1970, the Village Art Show, the Washington Square Outdoor Art Show, I just felt I belonged there. This is what I was meant to do. You know, every once in a while, if you're lucky, you find what you were meant to do. It, it's too bad that being an artist wasn't a profitable undertaking of mine, but it certainly made me happy. I told my granddaughter, I can be happy just no matter what happens, so long as I have my art. Art is a real, real pleasure for me, so I have to feel that's more important than making a living. I've been a full-time artist since 1970. That's 41 years. Imagine that. But the nice thing is that it all paid off in the sense that I've really unlocked my inner child, so I'm free to paint whatever I want. If I have a feeling, I can do a picture about it. And um, at this stage of my life, I'm able to paint things I don't know how to paint. And all I just have to do is think, and I can do it. It's lovely. Picasso said, it takes a long time to become young. It seems to be kind of a matter of, of confidence or something. Because I don't feel any different from what I was then. I don't think I've gained any knowledge. Well, on the, I, I, I've said that what I did when I was five years old was fine. What I did when I was 12 was fine. and. What I, the art I did when I was 25 was fine and 35, and now that I'm 74, my art is still fine. But it's nice to feel free that I don't have to copy anything anymore. I can look at a book if I want to, just to enjoy it, but I'm, I'm free. I'm, I've unlocked my, my inner self. I'm free to make a fool of myself without fear. I'm free to enjoy myself. So that's a nice thing. But this video, don't you think it's gone on too long? Maybe I should cut it. Okay, I cut a few seconds out, but then I thought maybe you'd want to see me putting this dark color in around the side of the face. <laughs> There's not much exciting in this video, but, you know, a little darks here and there, you can watch it. As I said, don't expect a, a fetching result because it's not finished at the end. Mm. But I'm certainly... There it is. See, I'm drawing a few lines here and there. I'm scribbling it in. Without rhyme or reason. Isn't that a funny thing? Painting effortlessly. When I'm finished, I think it'll be very nice, but it'll take quite a while before it's finished. Painting is a funny thing, isn't it? 
It's not like building a house where you start from point A and go to point B. It might just meander all over the place and make a big, big, big mush. Here I am with the blue now. Um, paint sticks. Wasn't the black with a brush? Now we're on paint sticks again, huh? Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. I guess I'm working on a sleeve. Who knows, my dears? I think it's time to cut this again. I'm boring my audience. Marsha, can't you get to the point here with this painting? Mm -mm -mm. It's a blue, blue sleeve. Oh, I can't cut it now. The opera is so beautiful. You know, on YouTube, you can't, um, you can't have anything that's copywritten by somebody else. So, I hope they don't cut the soundtrack for this, because I like the background music, but, um, what can I do? I like to listen to opera while I paint. It's an integral part of the process. All I can do is hope. And you know what I buy for lunch when I'm painting? Tempura and soup and California roll. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What could be better than the life I lead, huh? Here are some more still photos of me nurturing my inner child. See, the face has changed, and, but it's, you know, we're getting the feeling there. Here we are with Mookie being black. You know, while I'm at Vitlaso painting this, my 77-year-old sister is in Antarctica on a vacation. Isn't that amazing? She's like the opposite of me. We're like the active and the contemplative life. She's thin, I'm fat. She exercises all the time and I'm sedentary. She gets antsy if she's not moving, and I get antsy if I am moving. So this is my idea of the perfect vacation. To just, if, if I had a vacation, if somebody, you know, gave me a first class ticket, because I'd need a first class ticket to fit in the airline seat to Europe, I'd want to go someplace where I could just do artwork. That's what I do. You know, during the week I work in clay at, in, uh, Port Chester, New York at the Clay Art Center. I'm going to do a video of my clay work, but the problem is it's so much slower than painting. You wouldn't see anything. I'm going to have to have just still pictures, I'm afraid. Clay takes ages and ages, but it could be because I don't know what I'm doing. Everybody else works much, much faster than me. Anyway, here I am with a different paint stick. I'm using red now. And I'm putting red in the place right where the mommy, my nurturing self, touches the baby. That's, I think at the time I was thinking, that's a very important contact point. Where her cheek touches the head. So here I am. A little more red, a little more work on it. We're getting near the end of the day. The painting is not finished, but I'm finished. Let's put it that way. So uh, after this much work, I'm realizing that if I don't sign the painting now while the paint is wet, it's going to be very hard later on when, uh, you know, I work on paintings for a long, long time, and when they get all dried and full of little dots, it's hard. So I've taken a pencil here, and I'm finding a place where the paint is wet and writing my name, Marsha S. Wilson, 2011. Now I've taken a little paintbrush and some paint, and I'm putting a little smile on the face of, the, of my inner child. I think that's because I realize I've made myself happy just painting this painting. So here's a picture as I left the painting at the end of the day. It's not finished, but it was a successful day. <laughs>